Hi, I'm Jenny Brown. A very, very warm welcome to this week's MFB News. And I say very warm because it's freezing. I've woken up this morning in Seven Oaks to a not insignificant dusting of snow. Probably got quite a few centimetres out there at the moment. Um, and it's freezing. You know, it's March and we're all here with snow coming down. So I hope the snow situation, wherever you are, is OK. Now, in terms of what we've got for you this week, we're going to do our usual rundown on what the lenders have been up to. That's going to be very quick. There's been very, very few changes this week, um, but there are still a couple of really good bits in there. I'm then going to talk to you about some lending criteria changes, which was really all around rental calculations. And then I thought it'd be quite interesting just to kind of talk a bit more um, in depth about that in terms of the greater market to really just let you know what's going on with rental calculations across the board. Now, I think it's fair to say that as a mortgage brokerage, rental calculations is probably proving to be the single greatest challenge that we face at the moment in terms of placing people's mortgages. So we're going to talk a bit about that. I'm then going to carry on to talk about the latest uh, results in terms of house prices. Um, we've got a survey that's come out from the Mortgage Works in terms of landlord confidence and also some research which has been carried out, which is talking about how many landlords are going to exit the market over the next 12 months. OK, so first up, lenders. So in the last week, we have had a new uh, limited edition semi-exclusive product release from Paragon, which is actually incredibly good. Now, this is a five year fixed rate, um, five year fixed at 5.45%, which on the face of it may not sound terribly exciting. However, when we take into account the setup fees and also the lender's criteria and understand why it's actually very good. So 5.45, five year fixed rate, um, arrangement fee of £2,495. There's an application fee of £299, but you do get a free valuation. And this product is available for loans of up to £4 million. Now, Paragon as a lender, they will lend to a first time landlord buying a really straightforward property, but they'll also lend to limited companies, layered limited companies. Now, in terms of the actual um, securities that they're able to take on, so they're fine with normal straightforward properties. But likewise, they can also consider blocks of flats of up to 20 self-contained units and HMOs of up to 20 um, letting rooms. So when you keep that in mind, actually, to be able to get a five year fixed rate at a sub five and a half percent with a flat arrangement fee of two thousand four hundred ninety five is actually incredibly good. And also keep in mind the free valuation when we're looking at these larger properties. So the valuation fees um, when they're payable tend to be determined by the value of the property. So if you had a block of 10 flats, which was worth a couple of million pounds, the valuation fee alone would probably cost you a few thousand pounds. So that would be less than the arrangement fee, essentially. Um, so a really great saving there. So we're really, really excited about this product. Now, like I say, in terms of interest rates, 5.45 in the very specialist end of the market is by no means the lowest interest rate available. But a lot of lenders who are charging um, much lower interest rates are charging enormous arrangement fees. And when I say enormous, as high as 7% of the loan amount. And this is the highest I have ever seen. And I've been a broker for a really long time. And the reason the lenders are doing this with the lower um, interest rates and the high arrangement fees is trying to drive down um, essentially what would be the monthly payments because the rental calculation um, that they use to determine how much you can borrow is, is on the back of or based on when it's working at five year fixed rates, you actually interest rate your monthly payments. So by driving the interest rate down, it means that they can lend you more per pound of rental income than they can on a higher interest rate. However, um, they still need to, the lenders still need to make their margin, so they're going to charge somewhere else, and on this occasion, it's the arrangement fee. But well done, Paragon. Now, we've also seen United Trust Bank lower their interest rates. Now, these are not a lender we talk about very often. They're really new to buy set lending. They've been lending for donkey's years and very, very prolific in the development finance space and also bridging finance. But they've moved into the buy-to-let world, and actually their offering is pretty solid. Now, they have um, reduced their rates. Um, reductions of 0.3% across the board. So two year fixes from 529 and five years from 5.89%. Now definitely a specialist lender. So these guys really position themselves as such. Um, limited company lending, large portfolios, no minimum income requirement. They also kind of really shout about the fact they're quite good with um, the sort of less favoured properties. And I say less favoured by the lenders rather than by landlords and their tenants. So they can look at things like studio flats of up to 30 square metres, they're fine with high-rise blocks of flats of up to 30 storeys as long as there's a lift. Can you imagine living on the 30th floor without a lift? Um, they're not able to consider consumer buy to let. So this is where we're mortgaging a property which was not acquired with the sole purpose of being rented out. So, for example, you inherited it or you have lived in it. Now, there are exceptions made for those people who already have a portfolio of buy to lets in this circumstance. But by and large, if you've lived in the property, they can't lend to you on that particular security. Um, they can do blocks of self-contained flats of up to 10 and also 10 HMOs. Another thing that's quite good with their criteria, if you have got mortgage arrears which are over 12 months ago, they can consider you also. It's a great news from United Trust Bank. 
And lastly, we've seen Bank of Ireland bring their pricing down. Their fixed rates are now from 4.56. Bank of Ireland, very, very sort of vanilla standard lender, um, loads of great uh, stuff in their criteria, but largely just looking at straightforward properties and um, no limited company lending. So look, some good movement from the lenders in the last week, but by no means the large kind of tsunami of changes that we've been witnessing in prior weeks. OK, now just to say with regards to swap rates, so swap rates are kind of largely stuck at around 4% at the moment. So um, throughout the course of the day, they're kind of bouncing between four, so 3.95 and about 4.1%. That means that obviously the price of funds hasn't really moved um, over the last couple of weeks. So lenders are just not repricing. And that's why we're not seeing huge numbers of, you know, the tsunami of kind of rate changes we've seen in previous weeks. We're just not seeing that. And when we're speaking to lenders at the moment, they're saying that, you know, we were going to bring our rates down, but actually because our cost of funds has increased at the moment, we're just going to sit tight. So that's why we're not seeing much price changing for the time being. How long this will continue for? It really just depends what happens in the money markets and when confidence kind of returns in terms of what's going to happen um, across the board. And not only across the board, but across the pond in terms of inflation and therefore interest rates. So I think it's just kind of a case of we are where we are for the time being, um, you know, and hopefully things will start to kind of move again. But at the moment, there's no real signs of that happening. Now, what we have seen in the last week is a couple of lenders changed their approach on rental calculations. Um, now, rental calculations is probably causing us the largest headache at the moment because these have become more onerous over the last few months um, because rental calculations, how much you can borrow per pound of rent is based on how much the monthly payments are going to be. When you have higher monthly payments, it drives down how much you can borrow in very short terms. So we've seen two lenders make changes. The first one we've seen is BM Solutions who have said, look, if you're coming to us with a like for like remortgage, so that's where you are remortgaging to them, but you're not borrowing any additional money over and above what you currently owe. They're going to offer a more favourable rental calculation than they would to you if you were remortgaging and borrowing additional money. Now, the calculation they're using is that you would either be 145% um, coverage, assuming interest rate or 6%, or the pay rate plus 1%. Um, and actually looking at their um, kind of rates available um, being the sort of low to mid five. So I think realistically at the moment, it's fair to say their calculation would be 145% um, assuming interest rate of around sort of um, 6.2, 6.3, around that mark. Now to qualify for this calculation, you have to be earning over £55,000 a year. Um, if you do not earn that level of income, then you're back to their normal calculation, which is 145% coverage assuming an interest rate of um, pay rate plus two percent so seven point something in this case so it's great that BN Solutions <clears throat> excuse me are starting to really um, review these things like I said any changes on rental calculations is really welcome at the moment because this is where I think we're probably struggling the most to place deals. And I've also seen the Skipton who have um, reduced their rental calculation on five-year fixed rates so they've come down from a whopping 7.6 percent coverage down to 7.15 percent um, I mean, do you know what? It's, it's, it's a positive change. I mean, does it make them competitive? No, it doesn't actually. But you know what? It's still a good decision. And I, I think at the moment, like I say, any change um, positively is really, really welcome. Now, one of the things we're getting pushed back on is why lenders are stressing at such high rates, particularly on five-year fixes. So if you're taking a five-year fix at 5.5%, why are they stressing um, your payments at 7.6% or 7.15% or whatever the number is? Um, lenders have traditionally used um, on five-year fixes the pay rate and the plan is or the expectation is very much that over five years interest rates would have come down so why stress so high and actually BM Solutions were in seeing us yesterday I did ask that question and they couldn't honestly answer me I think it's really just um, it's still the kind of um, tail off from the mini budget when the rates really spiked lenders put these very high rental calculations in um, as a measure to kind of um, as, as on the back of that and they haven't really brought them back down again yet in a, in a true sense so I think there is still a lot of room for manoeuvre to go on but I think then it's just it's all very very slowly catchy monkey at the moment now on the back of the rental calculations I just really wanted to kind of update you as to where things are and I think it's fair to say the whole rental calculation piece has just got so incredibly complicated we are even struggling to um, bring those calculations onto our sourcing systems now because there's just so many variations and the BM Solutions would be a prime example of that. Is it a like for like remortgage? Yes, therefore you can have one or two calculations but if the client earns more than £55,000 a year they get this calculation so that's just a flavour of it. So like for like remortgages bring their own rental calculations and um, for personal borrowers it depends on your tax code as to whether you um, have a higher or lower tax uh, rental calculation. Actually if you're a couple applying together and one of you is high rate or one of you is basic rate. Some lenders are now offer what they call a blended calculation. 
generally 130% coverage. Then if we move to limited companies, you will get a different rental calculation because your tax are taxed differently to individuals. Um, and then we have top slicing as well. So top slicing is where a lender saying, well, look, actually, on the face of it, the numbers aren't stacking up in our traditional calculations, but we recognise that you've got oodles of disposable personal income, you can afford to make up the difference. So we're going to run essentially an affordability calculation to see whether things are affordable. So that kind of sits there as well. So just very, very complicated. But what I wanted to do is really kind of give you an example of where things sit. And because things are so varied, it's really difficult to kind of say, this is where things are exactly. But what I've tried to do is extricate what I feel to be um, kind of good representative calculations in the market. But know that there are some which are definitely less generous and some which are also much more generous as well. So these are kinds of the average. So if you're an individual, um, so you're borrowing personally on a five year fixed rate, broadly speaking, if you are a higher rate taxpayer, you'll be able to borrow 127 times monthly rent. So if you were achieving a rent of £1,000 per month, the rental calculation would get you to 127,000 basically. But if you're a basic rate taxpayer, you could borrow up to 147 times your rent, so 147,000 pounds if the rent was a thousand pounds a month. So that's kind of where things are um, personal names. For limited companies just sort of doing the same exercise on a five year fix, um, generally speaking, it's 170 times rent. So for what every thousand pounds of rent you get, you could borrow 170,000 pounds, so slightly more generous. But like I say, there are so many variations on this. So if you are looking to understand how much you can borrow, generally the best thing you can do is give us a call and we can do the maths and go through all the different kind of um, options available for you. Just know that you may be expected to provide a bit more information than you have historically, for example, income levels, because actually now more than ever, this is really factored into um, the calculations and what lenders will be able to do for you. Okay, now Halifax have released their latest house price data and there's some quite interesting news in there, actually quite surprising news if I'm honest with you. So what they've said is that house price growth picked up to 1.1% in February um, from 0.2% in January and 1.3% in December. So the annual rate of house price growth remained at 2.1% for the third consecutive month with the average UK property now costing £285,476. Now what they go on to say, and because obviously this is very positive news, is that the, annual, uh, so the rate of annual growth slowed in all nations and regions during February. Annual growth reduced most significantly in the northeast at 1.1% in February versus a rise of 3.6% in January. Interestingly, average house price in London are now 526,842, which is down by 0.9% over the last year. London may be affected by its large proportion of flats, prices for which have broadly stagnated. Despite this slowdown, homes in London still cost over £240,000 more than the UK national average. Annual growth fell the least in Scotland. House prices in the nation are now an average of £198,779, a growth of 2.2% versus 2.3% in January. Similarly, in Wales, annual growth in February was 1.2% versus 1.9% in January, with homes costing an average of £210,917. Now, the thing that I found quite interesting here is the property type. So by property type, prices of flats are now into negative territory over the past 12 months. So minus 0.3% annual growth, while prices for terrace properties have broadly stagnated at plus 0.3%. Detached properties have increased by 1.5% over the year, which is the lowest rise since 2019. Annual price inflation remains stronger for new houses, 6.6% four month high than for existing properties at 1.1% unchanged at the lowest in nearly a decade. So what do we take away from this? Um, look, actually, I think um, it really just shows that things have kind of um, been going down really, really slow, but actually it feels like it's bottoming out at the moment. Now, um, this is actually on the back of the kind of what they call the new year bounce. So in the new year, there's always a bit of a rush on house buying where people have kind of made their new resolutions, obviously got sick of being with their family over Christmas and need something larger. I don't know. But, look, you know, things do tend to rebound in um, January, February. Maybe that's driving this. Maybe it's not. Maybe we just have actually hit the bottom already. Um, but actually, I think, you know, in terms of where house prices are going, this is really kind of supporting the view that any reduction we're going to see over the course of or for the first half of this year will be relatively small. OK, now, lastly, what are your landlord friends up to at the moment? So I've got two separate reports from two very different types of institutions here. Now, first of all, Octane Capital have... Um, done some research and they have come to the conclusion that over a third of a million landlords may quit the private rental sector 
as a result of being penalised by tax and an onslaught of red tape. The analysis by this firm says this could wipe £223.5 billion from the value of the private rental sector in the process. Across the UK, the sector currently accounts for 18.8% of all dwellings, which equates to around 5.6 million homes. It's estimated these properties are owned by 2.7 million landlords, with each landlord owning an average of just over two properties. However, Octane believe this number could be on the brink of a significant decline as rather than addressing the housing crisis head on, the government has introduced a string of legislative changes designed to deter vital investment by reducing landlord profit margins, a move that has sent the amateur landlord sorry, being hit the hardest. And what they go on to say, which is quite interesting, it's estimated that 14% of the UK's buy-to-let landlords are so-called amateur landlords owning just one rental property. This equates to some 383,600 landlords across the nation and therefore the same number of privately rented homes. So that's quite interesting, I think, to read. And then just looking at the um, Mortgage Works regional snapshot, which has come out, um, what they're talking about here is that 73%, sorry, 7% of landlords have, who responded to their survey, so I should go on to add, have um, acquired a property in the last three months versus 12% who have sold a property in the last three months. Now, this report goes on to talk about landlord confidence. So what they're saying is that confidence has fallen across three of the five um, optimism metrics. The exceptions are confidence in rental yield, which remains at 37%. So 37% of landlords are confident in their rental yields going forwards. And the UK financial market, which has increased slightly by 1% versus quarter three in 2022. Now, the proportion of landlords making a profit from their lettings activity has also decreased by 5% to 81% since last quarter. Uh, more positively, gross rental income per property is up by approximately £300 per annum, um, average across the whole of the respondents. Rental arrears in the last 12 months and void periods in the last three months have also decreased. So... <sighs> I do think, I mean, that it's quite apparent that the number of um, private rental properties on the market is starting to decrease. And I was actually listening to an interview with Foxtons um, yesterday about this. And what they were saying is that actually, yes, you know, the reality is there are less and less buy set properties available, which is continuing to push up rental yields. Their predictions for this, are actually, it's not going to just continue to really um, underpin the rental market in the next 12 months, but actually over the next few years as well. Um, so I think, yes, there are landlords who are divesting from the market. Um, obviously, the government have um, made lots of decisions which have impacted landlords um, adversely and landlords are now really reacting to this. However, there's also um, more noise, more chatter, I think, in terms of government who are actually recognising that if like, this many landlords were to divest from the market, it would cause a huge issue in terms of a housing crisis. So I think they've actually probably sort of um, I think maybe the penny has finally dropped that actually you can't simply disenfranchise thousands and thousands of landlords and suddenly, you know, it's going to solve a problem because it simply would not. So I think actually, what do I take away from this? So yes, there are landlords exiting the market. Fewer rental homes um, means actually, I guess, that rental incomes will continue to increase, which if you're a landlord who's staying in the game, that can be a good thing. Um, this also means that rental voids are um, coming down. So that's a real positive thing. I mean, I think really it's just a case of watch this space to how many landlords actually do leave the market altogether. Um, I think, you know, like I, I think I've said this in previous videos, whenever there's some adverse changes in the market, landlords will kind of react saying, oh, I think this is enough for me now. I think you know, this is the final straw. And then they don't actually sell. So um, I think most landlords are really committed, but they just get incredibly frustrated um, in terms of where the market has sometimes gone against them. But by and large, I think, you know, my sense from this is actually if you are a landlord, um, low rental voids and high rental yields are positive things. So long may that continue. And that's me for this week. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. Um, I'll be back again same time next week. But if you do have any questions, we would absolutely love to hear from you. 0345 345 6788. Or by all means, go and have a nosy on our website, mortgagesforbusiness.co.uk. I shall leave you in peace to enjoy the snow. Happy sledging to those of you who have snow. Um, and hopefully this time next week, I'm going to be talking to you and um, wearing my sunglasses because it's going to be so hot and sunny. We can live in hope, can't we? I'll see you next week.